welcome back to Grumps Barn, where today we're going to be doing a bit of a catch-up and a bit of work on the uh, Defender, which will be in here shortly, because as you can see, there's not a lot in here at the moment. One empty garage. Okay, barn. Fuck me, I can't even get that right. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so... Catch up a bit. Well, I've actually been pretty busy of late on the freeloader. Uh, didn't bother filming it because I've replaced the right hand uh, front door regulator. Uh, I've already filmed doing the uh, passenger side one not so long ago. So that would have been pretty boring to do that yet again. Um, I had to readjust the handbrake because. Uh, you can't adjust those handbrakes in the, like a normal bloody motor. If you set it so it comes on on the third click, then the cables are way too tight and the adjusters on the back wheels stop the uh, shoes from moving properly. The two will basically act against each other and it locks the, uh, locks the back uh, shoes up without them actually contacting the wheel properly. Do a fuck all handbrake. You have to set them quite loose. Bloody crazy. Supposed to come on between 7 and 11 clicks. Which is almost to the fucking roof. It's bloody stupid. But anywho, yep, there's that done. Um, we pulled its MOT on a bit of welding. It needed doing. Why the outer seals was going. I completely forgot to film that. Because I just wanted to get it done in a hurry. So I can get the thing back and get its MOT passed. Oh, and I had to sort out the um, number plate light unit. The lights kept coming on and off on that thing. So I took it apart to have a look and it was a bit grotted up. Cleaned it all up and found that the two connectors on it that connect into the wiring loom were both loose. They're uh, only held, they're held on by uh, like a bronze rivet. Or the bronze or copper, I'm not sure which. But they've worked a bit loose, so I just needed a bit of a squeeze with some uh, pliers to tighten it back up again. Yeah, so that's all done. It's all sorted. It's got through its MOT, which uh, if you're not from uh, around these parts, the MOT is basically a roadworthiness test that all cars have to have every year in these islands. So yeah, that's that all done. And today I'm bringing the Defender in here. I'll film a little bit of it because uh, I'm adjusting... The front wheel, one of the front wheel bearings is a teeny bit loose, it's just nipping up. And I have had another fucking UJ go. This time on the back prop, and it was one I replaced, what, two years ago. And uh, it's just worn out. Lovely, isn't it? The shit quality stuff they pass off as uh, anything now. Never mind, well, I won't be filming uh, doing that, because uh, you know, I've got all that up on here anyway, doing UJs. So yeah, it's just going to be basically me adjusting a bearing, not a lot else. Oh, and before I forget, yes, we have um, we have something very unique in the cow shed. Although I won't be able to show you, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, as you can see, I'm using the old camera, which uh, is ridiculously overexposing everything. That is quite dark in here, I can get away with it. Under here somewhere is a family of weasels. They're about ten little ones. And I assume mum will be there somewhere. <laughs> All living under there somewhere. Or possibly under this step, I'm not quite sure. You don't get to hear them or see them uh, most of the time. But the other day I was uh, in the cow shed uh, sorting out a couple of props for the ceiling to stop it uh, waggling about in the wind. I'm making a hell of a noise and I heard this weird squeaky, high pitch or purry squeaky itchy noise, really weird, coming from in there. And then it started coming from all around me. And I thought, this is very strange. Then I saw these little faces all poking out of everywhere. 
and a few of them ran past. And yeah, we've got baby weasels. <laughs> so yeah, interesting. <laughs> All right, I better get on with this bloody defender. All right, we're up in the air. Got the wheel off. Make sure if you're doing anything with these hubs to get the uh, end that you're working on way above the other one so that when you start taking things apart you don't get any oil dribbling out from the diff because it will happen <laughs> although it shouldn't uh, with what I'm doing today I'm not even going to be taking the drive shaft out so or any part of it so there shouldn't be any leakage but you never know the first job is to flip this off rubber cover this one that is actually cracked I didn't notice that before so I have to get another one that has been on there 28 years mine so it hadn't done bad and then you'll find underneath your drive shaft if you've got a 300 TDI like this you need circuit pliers to take this little circuit off the end and once that circuit's off we're then going to be undoing these bolts around holding the uh, driving member on and then I'll be sliding that off. Once your sew clips off you will usually find shims sitting behind it. Don't lose these, you're going to need them again when you put it back together or you won't have the right amount of end float when everything's back together. There we go, on this one there's only one shim. Sometimes there are several depending on the thickness needed. But yeah, don't lose those. So there's not another one there, nope, that's it. And now I'm going to undo these bolts. You'll need to crack the bolts first because they should be thread locked in. So you need to crack the thread lock so you can get it undone. Well, they're saying that, I know these are thread locked, but I can't see any on the uh, threads now. But I know they definitely were because I bloody did it. <laughs> now to get this driving member off, get yourself a little pry bar or screwdriver underneath one of these end bits of the bolts there's a little gap underneath there and you can pry them off or just give them a slight nudge with a hammer and they should break free depending on how long they've been on there they might take a bit more effort to get off if you just give them a tap on the sides with a hammer or whatever just to free it up and stick the gasket this one only took a little bit of persuading to come loose and there we go, you just pull her off and there we go this is what we're going to be adjusting I might even stick a little bit more grease in there while I'm there doesn't really need it it weren't done that long ago I can feel that play No, it's very slight. It's just like I did find when I was uh, when I gave her a wobble top and bottom, there was a teeny bit of play that shouldn't be there. And that's all I'm doing is just taking that play out. So first thing I've now got to do is I'll give this a wipe down in a second and find out where the tab is. I think it's there probably somewhere. It's been bent up to stop this moving, and I shall bend it down with a hammer and screwdriver. I've got a hammer through screwdriver obviously. Don't try hammering a normal screwdriver, you just knacker it. Well you can, if it's big enough. There we go, that's the tab. It was that one, knocked down. So I can now get my socket over it. I haven't got a clue what size these buggers are. A big, a couple of inches or so. I get that on there, loosen her off. And as you can see, I, this is not a socket, this is actually a box spanner. I turned it into a socket years ago. So just welding an old knackered 12mm uh, socket to the end of it. Which works fine. Right, that's that uh, nut off. Now what I've got to do is get the uh, screwdriver behind here. And pry out 
this washer. Now if you do these carefully you can actually reuse these things. It will need flattening down again because it's going to get a bit bent doing this. Because they're quite a tight fit. I don't know if I'll even bother reusing this one for today because I do have about 10 million spares. Alright, there we go. That's that off. Now, give me a, that is, that was loose. So what I'm going to have to do is tighten that down a bit, loosen it off a teeny bit. To set the end float and then whack it all back together again. So there we go, I've just tightened it up fully. So it's nice and snug, loosened it off by about one flap of the actual nut. And now you can see it's still tight, I can't move it by hand like I could before. But there is some slack in there and everything's spinning nice and freely. That's what counts. Now I'm going to seal it all up. I've got to whack a new uh, washer on there. There's only one way that it can go on. Like that. Bend it down over the flat there. Tighten the other nut up on top of it. I think it's about 30 foot pound on those. If memory serves. Although I don't do that, I just tighten them up. Because it's not that uh, desperate. So yeah, and bend that down. Do the other nut up. Bend another bit of it up over that nut. It's just to stop them uh, undoing or doing up or anything in normal use. Because of the amount of spinning they do. Or everything does around here. Right, let's get that done. That's it. You can see it's all uh, locked down now. Tighten up against there and down this side over here. Let me slip this back on. Line it up. And then whack the uh, bolts back in with a little bit of uh, medium strength. Uh, Locked tight, or thread lock, we call everything locked tight around here. So, yeah, some medium strength thread lock on the uh, bolts as they go back in and do them up in a nice even uh, pattern round up to whatever torque it's supposed to be. I can never bloody remember, it's not a hell of a lot. Again, it's probably about 30 pounds or so, but check it out, don't just go by what I say. Right, now you'll notice I've only got four bolts in, that's deliberate. When it comes to putting back the uh, shim and circlip on here, you need this pulled out. So if you take the other bolt and screw it in the end here, you can then just then move and you can put it right out. And you can then Get your shim and your uh, circlip back on. Make sure once you've got the circlip back in, it's finally in. You, t you should be able to turn it freely, which means it's actually in its groove and it's not stuck anywhere. Then you can take this bolt out, whack some uh, thread lock on it, and put it in your final hole. Right, so the wheel is now back on. It's not tightened down fully, obviously, they just tighten up by hand. I've grabbed the wheel at the tire at the bottom and the top at the same time, I've given it a waggle, and all the free play that was there is gone. So that's that done, on with the prop shaft now. Oh well, got it all apart, got everything out, and one of the yokes has a crack in it. Oh, it's a good thing I found it now, I suppose. Means I'm gonna have to whack another prop shaft on there. Yummy! Never rains, but it fucking pours down around here, I tell you. <laughs> Anywho, that's enough for now. Oh dear. See you in the next one with whatever the hell I'm doing then. Take care, peoples.
Bye.